This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Are you charging too little for your photography? Well, we're about to find out. Let's start with the basics. First, you have to honestly assess your own skill level and experience. Here, it's also helpful to compare yourself to the competition in your market. If you find there aren't a lot of experienced pros in your market shooting your style, jackpot. I mean, as long as your genre and style are in demand. If there are a lot of other pro photographers just killing it in your area, well, it's likely that you'll have to lower your prices to book clients. It's just like any other market, supply and demand. If the supply outweighs the demand, as in there's more photographers in your area than there are people wanting to hire a photographer, well, you just won't be able to charge as much. If it's flipped, however, and you're the only one shooting guys dressed up in astronaut suits and you're surrounded by guys who want photos of themselves dressed up as astronauts, well, darn it, you're gonna do pretty well for yourself. You can Google around to see if you can find prices from specific photographers in your area, or even just an overall write-up about price ranges. If you're a wedding photographer in the US, you can search sites like The Knot, where photographers will have their price ranges listed on their profile, which can be a quick way to get an overall idea of what people are charging for what quality of wedding photos. It gets a little trickier when pricing commercial work because it just varies so dramatically. For some commercial projects, you may get paid based off your day rate. Depending on the client and the scope of the shoot, this may be between $500 and $1,000 per day. If a massive company reaches out to you, you can likely assume that they will have bigger budgets. A smaller, lesser known company will likely have smaller budgets. When you're a sought after commercial photographer, you will likely be charging at least in the five figures for projects. Now, if you're doing photo work for something like a small family run restaurant, you will likely find yourself charging closer to $500. Portrait work like headshots, family sessions, newborns, senior photos, etc., is often priced at an hourly rate. And when charging hourly, you have to figure out what your time is worth. Not only your time actually taking photos, but communicating with your client before and after the shoot, driving to and from the shoot, editing and delivering the photos, etc. As a newer photographer, $50 to $100 per hour is pretty common in the US. As you progress in your career, you'll want to up your prices, probably in the $150 to $300 per hour range. As you become content with the amount of shoots you book and the income you generate, your free time will become more valuable to you and that's when you'll continue to increase your prices, getting closer and closer to your I don't want to do a price. For event work, it obviously depends on the time you'll be there. Either a day rate or half day rate would be common. If your day rate is $750, a reasonable half day rate would be $450 to $500. Now you may be wondering, why wouldn't your half day rate just be 50% of your full day rate? Well, if you book a half day gig on a Saturday, it's possible someone else would reach out to you for the same day, but for your full day rate. So there's the opportunity cost of taking a four hour gig and turning down an eight hour one. And of course, your fixed costs of doing business are the same regardless of the shoot length. More on that later though. One thing that we recommend is trying to find out your prospective client's budget before you give your price. So if someone wants you to shoot their event, you can ask, what budget did you have in mind? Now they may say they aren't sure or won't give out a number. I am declining to speak first. And you'll have to give your price first, but it's possible a client will have a bigger budget than what you would have charged. One way we've approached this is on our contact form, we have a required field where they have to enter their budget. So when we get an inquiry, we have an idea of what they're willing to spend. Every so often you should be increasing your prices. Why? Well, you're gaining more experience, becoming better at your craft, and hopefully becoming more in demand for your services. And back to our example about market dynamics, there's only one supply of you. And so if your demand increases, your price should increase as well. Let's say you charge $2,000 per wedding and you booked 10 weddings last year. Your clients love the images, you saw your work and confidence improve, and word of mouth is starting to spread. Well, for the next season, try increasing your prices. If you think $3,000 is reasonable for your work in your area, don't be afraid to make that leap. Even if you book only eight weddings this year, you're still making $4,000 more than you did last year, and you have two more weekends free, less post-production, and more time to better serve the clients that you do have. If you raise your prices and you book drastically fewer clients, that's a sign your prices may be too high. You may need to cut back a little, maybe 24 or 2500 is where you should be at. And of course, the same goes for other types of photography as well. Often what you charge and what your prospective clients have a budget for won't be aligned. And in this case, you can just pass on the gig or you can negotiate. I never accept their first offer. What is your second offer? If you charge $1,000 to shoot an event and the client only has a budget of $700, you may want to still book the job, but just change the scope of work. So instead of shooting eight hours and offering 50 same day selects, maybe you just shoot six hours without same day selects. Usually the deliverables a client wants are negotiable, so offer to do what works for you. Don't devalue your work or your time. 
One thing we've always disliked is the traditional pricing method photographers used for years. For a portrait session, they charge a sitting fee, an editing fee, overpriced prints, a fee for the digital copies of your photos. It just doesn't feel very customer friendly and just never resonated with how we wanted to operate our business. We prefer having simpler, more straightforward pricing, but still give the option for reasonable upsells. We'd rather our clients just have a really good experience working with us and not think of us as salesmen trying to squeeze as much cash out of them as possible. Money please. So for instance, for an engagement session, we don't charge extra for outfit changes or multiple locations or edited digital photos. Instead, we'd offer something like a two hour session with at least 50 edited digital photos. We don't care if they wanna change outfits or drive 10 minutes to another location. It's not a big deal to us and we'd rather the clients get the most out of their two hour session and for us to get the best possible photos. We don't want unedited raw photos tied to our business circulating the internet. We want control over how those photos are post-processed. So of course we aren't gonna charge extra for editing photos. Everyone wants digital photos these days, so that's what we'll give them. No extra charge there. Now, something like photo prints or extra hours, sure, that we will charge extra for when we send them their online gallery. They'll also be able to buy prints straight from there where we have a reasonable profit built into the price. But another aspect to consider when setting your prices across the board are all of your core costs. So let's talk about that. Another factor to consider when setting your prices is your expenses. We can break expenses down into two categories, fixed and variable. Your fixed expenses will include your gear, supplies, website costs, software costs, advertising, studio or gear rentals, insurance, and business licenses. Your variable expenses will include packaging, postage, travel costs, hiring assistants and second shooters, etc. So not only do you have to ensure that your base expenses are covered, you then need to make sure that you charge enough to actually take home profit at the end of the day. The fact of the matter is you'll put in a lot of hours before even picking up your camera and even more after you set it back down and you'll have bills to pay just for existing as a business. Oh, and you'll have to pay around 30% of what you make in taxes, at least here in the US. If you've watched our videos before, you probably know that we are pretty big fans of Squarespace. We have been customers of theirs for years, long before this YouTube channel even existed, and still have our three Squarespace websites going strong. Usually we do something off the walls for our ad spots like fake our elopement to trick my mom, spoof old MTV reality shows, or do our best Peloton commercial parody. But I wanted to let you know about some new things cooking over at Squarespace. If you're a photographer looking to diversify your revenue streams, check out their new member areas. This allows you to sell access to gated content like video classes, digital downloads, or newsletters. Frickin' sweet. You can also showcase your photography with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Customize the layout, look, and feel to make it your own. Also, you can schedule and book appointments straight from your website. You need to lock in client meetings? Well, they can easily see your availability and reschedule if needed, making your life a heck of a lot easier. And if that wasn't cool enough, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain when you go to squarespace.com slash mango street, or just click the link in the description. We hope this video helps you get paid more for your work or at least understand how to accurately price yourself and better understand what goes into it. Oh, and if you just wanted a straightforward answer as to what you should be charging, it's dollars. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,